I welcome the millennial generation of young orthopedic surgeons who are joining this discipline at this formative stage. I welcome you. Be a part of their big family. Orthopedics involves the care of a huge system. Think of it. Vertebral column from cervical second to the coccyx, all upper limbs, lower limbs, trunk, muscles, nerves and bones, joints. Basically, if you look at orthopedics broadly, it has been divided into traumatic orthopedics and non-traumatic orthopedics. In traumatic orthopedics, you will come across fractures of any part of the body or dislocations of any joint, simple, compound, complicated, small number of injuries or multiply injured patient. In our country, it is not uncommon to have patients who have got multiple injuries in accidents. Similarly, in non-traumatic orthopedics, you will see infections, deformities, metabolic disorders, tumors, and congenital uh, disorders, degenerative changes which occur with aging population and neurological problems. It is a very extensive discipline, but I am sure an intelligent group of, or, of medical people will be able to enjoy this discipline and grow with this discipline. Predominantly, you will be required to inspect, the, to examine the patients, find a suitable investigation to do. Why do we examine? Otherwise, one can say, well, MRI, X-rays are available. Why should we examine the patient? No. We must examine the patient, which gives you a feeling with the patient. And the examination, the standard examination protocol is listen to the patient look at the patient, feel the patient, move the joint, measure the limbs and compare. Compare how? Not only clinically, look at an injured knee joint, compare it with the non-injured one. Look at a swelling of the right foot, compare it with the normal left foot and then compare as far as possible by an x-ray of both the joints. Especially, a comparative x-ray is useful when you, are, when you happen to examine a patient or the patient has reached you at a very early stage. And as we pass through this journey, you will learn care of fractures, suitable splints, suitable plasters, best position for plaster or best position for splints is what is called the functional position of a particular joint. These are all given in the text. One should know what is the functional position of a wrist joint, functional position of an elbow joint, and then we always aim to splint or provide a orthosis in the best functional position, either after trauma or after any surgical intervention. Then next stage comes that we have to start Inter, uh, uh, interventional procedures like we learn how to make an injection into a joint. Why do we inject into the joint? Not only inject into the joint, we put a needle into the joint, take the fluid out and then if needed we can make an injection into the joint of a suitable drug if needed. And as we pass through you will start assisting operative procedures and the wisdom lies if you see your mentor and you are helping him operate a particular situation, see it today, assist him and go back home and read it in the, in the books. The books are available in plenty and 
watch, assist, read. All this helps you in increasing your knowledge and understanding. My generation grew only with the X-rays. Up to 1987, only X-rays were available in our country for a common patient. It is in 1987 that MRI came. MRI is a beautiful investigation available to us today, especially for the problems of vertebral column and also for detection of disease at a very early stage. And how did I learn MRI? Whenever I had time, I would go to the MRI center, sit with the specialist there, learn it. It took me about six months to learn what is MRI. Today, as, well, as a teacher, one does make some mnemonics for people so that we can remember things. Today we say, if we can remember in MRI, MRI has two sequences. Sequence 1 called T2, T1, sequence 2 is T2. The main thing which changes the color in MRI is water. If we can remember this mnemonic, T2 water white, which implies in T1 the water would be black. What is water? Water is fluid in a joint, fluid in a bone, edema, traumatic edema, hemorrhage collection or infection has produced edema and you can also see the resolution in due course of time when you put these patients on treatment. Most of the other organs do not show much change in the MRI except the quantity of water or fluid contained in these tissues. For example, fat will remain white whether you do T1 shadow or whether you do T2 shadow. All our subcutaneous tissue has plenty of fat. If you observe these MRIs carefully, under the skin there is a layer of white tissue and it will remain white both in T1 shadows and T2 shadows. Gradually we learn all these things and we can improve upon our knowledge for the benefit of the care to the patients to which we are obliged to do. There is no upper limit of knowledge nor an upper limit of efficiency. Today, orthopedic discipline has super specialities. First of all, we must become general orthopedic surgeons, learn how to treat fractures and dislocations, learn how to treat majority of the orthopedic conditions but then some of us may like to become super specialists. There are roughly 15 super specialities developing in orthopedics in due course of time and some of you may like to become super specialists. However, to become a strong super specialist, you should have a very broad knowledge of general orthopedics. If your, if your base is strong, the pyramid top will be strong. Wish you all the best and I hope I will be able to meet you physically in some of the gatherings. Wish you all the best. Thank you.